It just released a functionality for uh, microbits and for our <coughs> IMO1 um, interface to the microbits. It have an SD card on the back, and we just released a functionality to record the data on the SD card from MakeCode. So I'm gonna make a project that uses a servo and infrared temperature scanner to scan um, a surrounding for temperature variance. So let's get cracking. Okay, so my project is to use an infrared temperature sensor, the SL19. So that's a fellow I have here. And I'm gonna use a servo controller, the OCO5, to control a servo, obviously. And then I have my micro bits, and I have my IMO1, and I have a SD card like this little thing here. I also have a SD card reader. And of course, I have a servo. So let's put it together. So here's the IMO one, and I want to put uh, this micro bit here on the top. So that's there. So therefore, I have to put the servo and the infrared uh, below. So the problem is that the infrared I can easily put below like that because it connector on the north side, we call it here, is available. But on the OCR5, I can't. But we can put it in sideways like that. So before I put that in sideways, I'm just gonna put another connector on here. I'm gonna put the SL19 below like that. And I'm gonna put it together, so like that. Okay? So now we have our a little circuit here, okay? And of course, I have to put a SD card in. And on the back here, what you do is you slide it. You slide it this way here, okay? And then you open it like that. And then there's a little uh, thing that shows you how it has to be put in. So obviously, when I do it like that, I can't see it. And then you close the lid. And then you slide the lid that way, and it sticks there, okay? This server controller can handle eight different servers. The bottom one here in this picture is battery. So the first channel is the first one. All servers normally have a brown, red, and yellow. So the red is normally always power, and the darkest one, in this case brown, is ground, and the last one, the yellow, is the signal. And channel, they call it here on the board. So you can see here that it says channel, and then it say VCC, and it says it's GND, which is short for ground here, okay? So this is how it's connected, and we are ready to program it. When I program it, I have to program it uh, using this port up here. And uh, there's not enough power on the micro bit to drive the servo. So when I run it, I power it using the power on IMA1. So I just plug in the cable here. But because we have to program it, I take the servo out and have it like this thing here. So I just can see if it works alone like that. So here on the screen, I have uh, the program I've written. So I'm just gonna go through it. Um, I have shared it, so there's gonna be a QR code where you can just scan it and, and, um, and find the code that way. Or you can, of course, sit and type it in again here. So the first thing I do, so th there is a one little thing with the IMO one, and that is that you can't put it into a forever loop. If you put it into a forever loop, then uh, th it doesn't work. So we are taking the forever loop away, and then we do everything in this on start, and our loop, we just have a while through. It's the same thing. So you can see here that we have uh, OCO5. We said in a, we, s we tell that we wanna use the first one, and of course, you can use one of the other ones. You just have to plug it into the right one. And then we set the range from zero to 180 degrees. So that's like from one side to the other side. And then we go in and we make a file. We say append here, so it, you know, write to the existing file. So if you run that a number of times, you will have this heading in the same file, obviously. And we say here, temperature one, two, and three. Now, 
I'm using the IMA1 here, I'm using the OCR5 here, and I'm using the SL19 over here. So in order for them to appear here, what you have to do is you have to go into extension, and you go in here and you say X in a box, slash PXT dash, and then the device you want to use. So you have to do IMA1, you have to do OCO5, and you have to do SL19, uh, okay? And of course you can choose other sensors, but this is the three we're using. And we do that, it comes up with a box like that. You click on it, I already have it included, so I'm not gonna click on it here. And of course, the same with the OCO5, comes up with a, um, a, a box and so on. So I have those extensions, oops. So now let's go back to it. So I set up OCO5 to that server. I go in and write to IMO one like that. And then before I go into the while loop, I made a function. It's just easier if you have the same thing you have to do repeatable times, you create a function. So I have one that's called record temperature at, and then there's a value here, number. So what I do is that that number is the degrees I want to run it on. So the direction. So I say OCO5 set server one to this degree. And then I pause just to make sure it's stable there. And then I set a, a variable, I just call it T, and I read the temperature of the object. So the SL19 can read the ambient temperature around the sensor and the object it points at. So that's my function. We go back to the program here. You can see here it says while true, it's the default. So I now call my function here, I say call record temperature at zero. So now it points the servo at zero degrees and it records the temperature and put it into the variable T. And I want to store that. So I put it into T1. And then I do it again for 90 degrees, store it in T2, and for 180 degrees and store in T3. And then I want to write this into a file. And you can see I had the heading here, temperature one, two, and three. So I'm gonna join them together here as a separate comma separate file. I call it CSV, you can call it anything. CSV stands for comma separate values. And we double click on that. If you're on Excel, uh, sorry, you're on a Windows machine and you have Excel, double click on it. It will open Excel. On my machine, which is a Mac, it will open the numbers. I can of course open Excel also if I want to. So down here, I now go in and say, I wanna write this to uh, my file, I want to append it so it writes it to the next line. So it says with line, and then I have this little function here that's called join. You can find that underneath text here. So you can see here there is a join. And what I want to join is I want to join the three variables I recorded with a comma in between. And I wait a little uh, bit here and I go back again. Now remember, there's already a second wait here, so 200 milliseconds is kind of like just wait and then run around so that's the code um so when you run this thing here what i suggest is that you try it out uh, and figure out if the server works like in this code here when you have that working because then otherwise you have to click this uh, the 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 um usb forward and backwards between this one and this one every time you want to test it so you just take the server out and you test the rest of the code now you want to kind of like have more feedback on if this is working. It's difficult. If you try to display anything here, there's not enough memory for that. So because all these functions take so much memory up, you don't have a lot of memory to do anything else. So I tried out a couple of times. I could see the server worked. I could see that I got uh, my temperature data into the, the SD card, and then I put it together. So here I have a, a little video. And you can see how it um, it um, um, uh, turns into three different degrees. So it took me actually much longer time to put it up on a tripod than programming all this thing here. Uh, the mechanical stuff is not my, my strings. So I used a lot of tape and cable ties, but I got it working. And then I, uh, uh, I took a picture of what it watches. So the reason why I had this little project was that um, I live near the sea and we have a bedroom that faces out to the sea and in a bedroom it can be pretty cold depending on the time of the year 
and uh, there's a little hallway leading away, and the temperature drop is uh, or the rise, the temperature difference just in the hallway is quite big. So I wanted to see if I could record this thing here and have it as a little experiment. So it points at the hallway, it points at the bedroom, so it points into a wall against the bedroom, and then it points against the window that faces the sea, kind of like see if I can kind of like uh, pick up the temperature from that. Now, I'm just going to show you um, here um, some data. It was from my testing, it wasn't when I when I running it there, because I wanted to kind of like uh, collect a lot of data. So um, when I plug uh, the SD card in, so let me just do that. Uh, so I take it out of um, of this thing here again. So I pull it this way, and then it drops out like this. I drop it into one of these. You can drop it into whatever you have that can uh, read SD cards. I also have like a, a thing like this thing here, but I prefer this to plug it into my USB. And this is just a standard SD card, it's 16 gig. Just remember it have to be micro SD card and not bigger than 32 gigabyte. If you have used it before, you go and find SD formatter. It runs on Mac and Windows and things like that. Don't try to format it with your own formatting tools or anything. Use the SD formatter from the SD organization, SD card organization. They have a download where you can download the SD formatter. Format there, and if it still doesn't work, go in and take the, not the quick format, but the proper format. It takes a long time, but then you have it formatted like if you bought it from the shop. So, <clears throat> there we go. I have it there. It says no name, and it creates a folder called I'm a one. You can't choose that. It just creates that I'm a one. And then the data CSV, that's what I call the file. And if I double click on it, then I get data here. So this is how the data is going to look like. The, there's a lot of decimals, and this is something that the uh, microbit does. It's nothing to do with the program anything. Microbit is just like that. If you Google it, you can see there's a lot of people that says, ah, can I not get rid of these uh, decimals? Obviously, it doesn't matter for the SD card. I mean, it takes up some space, but you know, if you put a 32 gigabyte card in, you can probably record forever. Um, so what I do here is I go into uh, um, click on my um, table here. I go into format, go into cell, and I just go in and say number, and I say just give me two decimal, and it looks pretty again. And of course, I can graph it, and you know down here you can see the 31, 32 here. That was because I put my hand over, and it's the same because I hadn't when I tested this thing here. I wasn't using the server. I was just kind of like see if I can get the data in. So. I'm uh, leaving the rest of the video here, but just you have the little video here that can show you how it's working. And then have fun. There's a QR code. You can download this thing here and you can find the OCR5, IMO1, um, and SL19. Remember some connectors and a micro bit, and you might have to find yourself a server. You can find it on our shop. Good luck. Thank you.